Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to show you how to remove anything from a photo in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Kelvin Designs. My name is Kelvin and I design and that's why it's called Kelvin Designs. Click right here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get all these episodes as they come out. And click right here to subscribe to my newsletter and my blog and you get all the free source files that come out with every episode. In this episode I'm going to show you how to remove anything from a photo in Photoshop very powerful and very simple. Here's the before and here's the after. All right, so let's get started. All right, so uh, to start off, you're gonna need the uh, source files to follow along this uh, tutorial. And to do that, just uh, go to my website, uh, kelvindesigns.com. And if you don't already have a uh, uh, an account or a login, you can sign up for free by clicking on this. Just fill out a form and you'll get an email to uh, create the account. It's free. And if you do have one, uh, you log in with your uh, username and password. And once you go to free lessons, I haven't added the new uh, the new uh, current tutorial, but uh, the way it works is, say you wanted to get the source files for this one, you just click on that. And once you're logged in, you click on download source files right here, and uh, that'll uh, bring down a zip file to your desktop or wherever you're downloading it to. And uh, once you've unzipped that, you get to have the PSD or whatever source file for uh, any episode. All right, so for this episode, we're going to open up this uh, Venice.psd, which looks like this. So it's a uh, long exposure photo um, that's very partially retouched. Uh, what we're going to address in this tutorial is removing something from a photo. So in this case, uh, this lamppost, as nice as it is, is kind of in the way, and uh, we're going to get rid of it. And we want to get rid of it. Uh, in a way that looks completely natural. Um, you may have seen other um, other methods of doing this using the uh, uh, various tools in an event. And sometimes you can tell and uh, the, uh, the, the object or the purpose of this is really to make it so that it is completely seamless. All right, so uh, let's start. The first thing you're gonna do is uh, just make a duplicate here of this layer so that we can keep track of our original and we'll call this uh, retouched or something like that. Okay, and uh, very simple, uh, we'll start off with, uh, uh, we can divide this area just to analyze this photo real quick. You've got the sky, so we have to replace this post. And it's in front, to do that, you have to basically take whatever's behind it and bring it in front of it. So you got the sky, you have the buildings, the water, uh, and then this is sort of uh, pavement or these bricks, all right? Um, so we'll do this in multiple sections. Uh, the first we're going to do is probably uh, this. Now there's perspective here, so you can't just take the clone stamp tool. And if you're familiar with the clone stamp tool or not, uh, what ha what that does is the clone stamp tool, let's see what size we've got. It's a little big. Let's do 120, a little harder here on the edge. Um, if uh, you hold down the Alt key, you're basically saying, I wanted to sample from this point exactly. And now look at that. It's basically taking from that point and oop, I'm going to undo that. I have a opacity here that's at 50, so let's bring that to 100. And I'm just going to do this kind of roughly just to, to see, just to show you what the uh, clone stamp does, all right? So that's what the clone stamp tool does. Um, it's very useful for some things. In this case, it doesn't work too well, um, specifically not for things that have perspective. I'll give you an example. If I wanted to take this brick right here and bring it over here, let's say over here now right now I can align it which is nice look at that it looks pretty good pretty good but the perspective is gone that that doesn't work out so we're gonna undo that the the way I would uh, recommend doing this is to actually uh, make a selection first of a part of this or somewhat roughly take the uh, the polygon lasso tool is pretty useful uh, just uh, click around here and take a piece of this right here, all right, make a selection, and then uh, Command J or Control J on a PC, or just new layer via copy, all right? Right here, what that did is, it made a new layer that you see here. I have my transparency grid completely turned off, so it looks white, just so it's easier to see. Um, but now you see what I, I made a selection, and we got a layer of that, okay? Very simple. What, uh, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can, uh, with the move tool, drag this over and 
basically do a little manipulation to change the scaling of this uh, as, uh, as well as the angle, all right? So let's take a look at that. To do that, um, I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to, say, 80, just so I can kind of kind of see through it. I need to see where the lines go and so on. 80 might even still be too high. Let's try 60. 60 is pretty decent, all right? Once that's done, hit Command-T or Control-T uh, on a PC, which does free transform, okay? And now I'm going to reduce the image. I hold on the Shift key so that I do not... If I don't hold down the shift key, I'm going to start screwing around with uh, the angles, which I do not want to do. So, and constraint proportions, that's what the shift does, all right? All right, so um, here's, a, here's a neat little trick. I see that uh, I need to find a point that I can use as my reference. So like this point right here, which you see the angle of that line, I'm going to use that and bring it right over on this existing one. Let's zoom in a little bit. Command Option uh, Plus or Command Plus just by itself. And we're going to move this so that it's perfectly aligned right there in that angle. Okay. Now this is going to become my reference point, uh, meaning I'm going to scale in and out of that. This is, we're agreeing that this is a good point. So I'm going to take this center point, all right, that's in right in the middle of the uh, transform and bring it right over that, which means that now that if I zoom out, uh, if I scale holding Alt and Shift, it's going to scale from in and out of that point. And that means that once I find my sweet spot, look at that, perfect. See? So finding uh, a point for you to uh, kind of scale out from works really well. Now, this was, unfortunately, I picked the wrong one. And that's just because, look at that, I'm missing a chunk here. So we'll go in and do this again. Let's take this point here and move that over here. Something like this. There we go. And it's still that point. That point hasn't changed. I can move it like right here. But it's about the same. All right. Zoom out again. Now we'll do the same thing. See, if I zoom out, there's going to be a point that's going to be really nice and sweet. And it should work just fine. Okay. Something like this pretty good all right and then we hit return and we can bring this opacity back to 100 and now there's just the the matter of making it sort of blend in all right so create a mask and the first thing i will do is um, i don't want the water to have that difference so i will take a brush b for brush right click and you can do uh 45 85 that's a pretty hard edge um so let's, let's try that out. Um, so I'm, I'm creating a mask on this new layer, which means I'm going to use the black to hide. And let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click and then shift click makes a line between, every time I hold down shift, it makes a line between my two clicks. All right, so here, sh click, shift click. I use the space bar to move with the hand tool. And then I hold down the, the shift again. And you see it just basically makes my, my semi-soft brush, semi-hard brush, um, make a line between the two points of my clicking. Okay, we are going to reveal uh, the lamppost uh, right here, but that's fine. The object of this first layer is to put this uh, first set of bricks, okay? And something like this. Pretty good, all right? Here you see it's a little higher, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and just take it, go a little lower and kind of make it blend in like that, okay? And we're going to do the same for the bottom bit. So kind of here, I want to keep a little bit of the shadow that's below the bricks, so that's fine. Something like that, okay. All right. And not too bad. Okay. How far do we go? Right here. Okay. Something like that. All right. And then you still have this pretty sharp line. So here, um, let's zoom out a little bit on the 100. Um, and we can get rid of all this here. So shift, so click, shift, click, click, shift, click. Should everything be gone? Everything should be gone. We can look to uncheck all these. All right. I still have a little bit around here. All right. And now we have this uh, hard edge right here. So we can do this a number of ways. In the mask, either take a really soft brush or 
thicker gradients and it's black to transparent up here and uh, let me just command K I'm gonna go and change my um, transparency gamut to uh, I'm gonna change my transparency gamut here and just so you can see what it looks like there you go that's transparent and if I go in here and just apply a gradient look at that oh it revealed a little too much here so I'm undo that but something like this that's pretty decent and then if I go on the top bit here do the same thing that's pretty good a little too strong so the, the gradient sometimes makes it a little too blurry but in this case it seems to work pretty well all right so that's for that first part Okay, so we got that first set of uh, bricks copied over, and the angle's pretty good. All right, um, a thing to note is that uh, the more, s the softer the brush or the gradient, the more sort of uh, blendy, non-grain blurriness we're going to get. And you can see it kind of here, and you can see it a little bit over here. So if you're getting too much of that, just uh, go in your mask, and instead of using a gradient, uh, go to the brush tool and use a bit of a harder brush, not as hard as the as the uh, 85. But if you see here, all right. Well, we don't want to reveal that line there, uh, but like something like this is possible. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it as is because I I don't really mind that that um that sort of grain over there. Uh, but I just wanted to note that uh, you don't want uh, two soft gradients from one um, grainy uh, layer to another. All right. Okay, the second part we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of this part and probably this piece too. I'm not crazy about that. So um, we can do this in different ways. Let's go ahead and uh, just hide this for a second, create a new layer. We're going to try this with the uh, clone stamp tool, see if it works. All right. So the clone stamp tool, which is this one right here, or S for the shortcut. And um, you'll see up here I have opacity at 100. This is again for the same reason. I want it to be, uh, I don't want to be mixing uh, two different grains and thereby softening it. Um, and keep it aligned. And uh, more importantly, the sample here is all layers. It doesn't actually matter here, uh, but I, I just, I want you to keep that uh, in mind. Um, if I had, say, this layer here uh, visible, it would actually sample this part as well. Okay. So we're going to hide this, go in here, and let's just try this. So the way the clone stamp tool works is you have a brush size that in this case is 121 and 53. So it has a semi-soft edge. You can kind of see it. Let's, uh, let's do it over here. I sample it by holding on the uh, Option key and clicking. And then wherever I go, it's going to mirror. You see that X that's following along below there in the bricks? And it's basically creating a, uh, a clone of uh, those pixels in the other area using a brush of my choosing okay i'm going to undo that uh, the cool thing is when you hold down the alt key um, it'll show you uh, the exact uh, part of where it's resampling okay so let's take let's take this area right here i'm going to i'm going to i usually take a hard edge so in this case there's a little t here between those bricks and i'm going to click it right there and uh, I'm going to let go and see, okay, well, how does it look right here? The color is considerably different, uh, but the angle is pretty much pretty much correct, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and try this out, see how that works. It's decent. It's not too bad. Let's see around here, okay? And I let go, all right? And now um, I'm going to go ahead and try some more, but now the angle is wrong. You see that? That doesn't work, so I'm going to undo that. And take another part, say this this area right here, and let's go right here and see how that works. Okay, the reason that the angle doesn't work is because there's perspective here, and we have to uh, basically respect that perspective. Okay, I let go because otherwise I'm going to repeat the bottom of that uh, over there. We'll do this in, in several goes. You'll see that there's some parts that get rep uh, a little repetitive. Like you see, this brick is here, it's here, and it's here. So we'll go fix that. Uh, later, but first let's get the bulk of this out of the picture. Okay, so let's take another angled part. Let's like say this here, and we can imagine that this would be right around here, something like that. Okay, 
All right, and I'm purposefully going past uh, these bricks because we actually have this whole thing would be covered by that, so that's fine, okay? And, all right, let's take another one. Let's take this and something like here. There we go, okay? All right, now we can actually put this back in here and we can see what we need to fix. What we need to fix is some blur blurry spots like right here, some little highlight parts here, and then any repetitiveness, okay? So um, I'm gonna take a slightly smaller brush. Let's do um, 80 maybe. 80 is still a little too big. Let's do 60. I'm keeping the uh, the edge to about 50. Uh, 50 is fine. And uh, so I don't mind having a brick over here that's slightly repetitive, but three times in a row is too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's take this one over here and there you go. See, I hold on the Alt key every time. And there you go, something like that. This here is a little too much, so let's take, let's take maybe this and bring it over here. So that's a little too bright. Click there. Okay, like that. This angle is a little wrong, so I'm gonna just take a little piece of that and just kind of take that out. Um, I don't like this, this, that chunk of dirt or whatever that is. I'm gonna take get rid of that like so, and all right. Uh, anything that you see repetitive, it's nice to kind of clean it up to add uh, differences. This brick is completely the same as this, so let's just change it a little bit, something like this. All right, you can make it a little softer edge um, if you're doing little fine tune-ups like this. Um, it's just for the big ones. You don't want a big soft gradient. Um, maybe let's try this here like this. There you go. That's not too bad. That angle's a little wrong. I'm, I'm gonna undo that and go backwards. I should take this. I should really just take this bit and that should be better. There you go. Okay, um, let's get rid of that. Soften this up a little bit. Bring it up a notch like that. Um, okay, you can go in here and, and really fine tune everything. Um, I'm kind of, I'm pretty happy with this. If you start seeing a lot of patterns and stuff, then uh, it's probably better to do it the other way, which is uh, like we did for uh, this one, which is taking a chunk and then changing the size. All right. Um, in this case, I wanted to show you how to do this with the clone stamp tool. Uh, let's see if we zoom out a little bit. It's pretty decent. Um, we could go and make these lines even straighter and really follow that perspective perfectly. Um, I'm pretty happy with this, so uh, we're going to leave that at that. Okay. So for this next part, um, we're going to replace the buildings, okay? Uh, probably the hardest or most, most, most in-depth part of this, uh, uh, removing anything uh, from a photo. So I take the marquee tool up here, and I just want to take uh, a chunk of buildings, I'll say from here to about here, and I'm going to make a new layer via copy, Command-J or Control-J on a PC. Okay. So what it does is I have this uh, series of buildings. Now, um, I need to treat the sky separately than the buildings. So uh, the first thing I need to do is basically outline this from, um, from the, uh, the, outline the sky here from the buildings. So to do that, very simply, I'm going to uh, uh, command click on this layer, which makes a selection again. Let's control click on a PC. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this, something like this. And very simply, I'm going to go and use the uh, magic wand brush tool here, the quick selection tool. And I'm basically, so everything, so this is what's selected. I'm going to deselect this part, okay? And this, all right, so now you see, look at that, with two clicks. It's pretty uniform. So it, it was uh, very simple. It just kind of selected all that. And I actually don't really want the water either, so... Let's just go ahead and I'm holding on the, oh, that did too much. Undo that. I'm going to just click right here uh, again, too much. Uh, oh, it's on sample all layers. So I'm going to uncheck that and this should work for a little better. There you go. So in your quick selection tool, make sure you're just on the layer you, you actually want. And uh, we can even do a refine edges. Let's just, uh, there's another whole tutorial on, on selections, which you can find in my uh, channel. But just to uh, see what it looks like. Uh, let's do it on black, see what we got. And it's pretty decent. That selection is decent. So we're just going to hit OK. It's going to turn that into a selection. And then I just hit the uh, mask tool over here. 
and it created the mask. I have a little line over here, so I'm just going to brush that out. Hit B for brush. Check my, uh, I like 4585 as sort of my go-to. And take that out. Okay. All right. And I've got one on this side, too. All right. Let's zoom out again. And um, we're going to move this over here. And once again, the perspective is wrong. So I'm going to uh, make the uh, visibility of this uh, layer, the opacity. Let's bring this down to about 60, something like this. I'm going to have to zoom in again. All right. And let's look at what we have. Something like this. So we know that the bottom needs to align. And then the buildings can pretty much change. It's not too important. Command T to transform. And uh, let's just shrink these a little bit because there is perspective. And see the buildings are about that tall. So we want to keep that a little bit smaller maybe. Something like this. It's pretty decent. Okay. Um, something like that. Maybe a little bit bigger. Something like this. Use the uh, arrow keys if you want to just do small increments. I like to do that. Okay, something like that. I'm going to hit return. And now I'm going to bring back the opacity. And uh, that's pretty simple. And I want to actually, uh, there's a few things we need to do here. Um, I'm going to put this in a group. So just click on the group button and make sure it's inside like that. I just drag it in there. And because in my group, I want to have another mask. I want to save this mask, but I want to have another mask uh, without altering this one. So I click on the mask button. And now uh, with my brush tool in a mask, I can go ahead and just brush things out. And I'm not affecting this mask that uh, actually was detailed on the roofs. So something like that, pretty good. Um, I'm going to try to keep, I'm going to try to make it somewhat natural. Uh, X to uh, change your colors to white for reveal. So I'm just looking at where can I cut this house off to make it look kind of natural. Probably right around here and here, something like this. And then this looks like a pretty natural cut right here. It's the edge of this building right there. Okay, so something like that. The bottom, oh, I have some more here. All right, and then the bottom's a little low. So either I bring the whole thing up a little bit like that. And then the color is clearly, this is, this was, right by the sun so it's more color and so on so let's go in here and um, we can do a hue sat image adjustment hue saturation let's just desaturate just quite a bit okay minus 30 38 or something okay so now I'm looking at I'm comparing the buildings next to each other and these are pretty clean so this yellow is pretty close to this this is a grayer building than that and it kind of works all right so that actually works pretty well um, there's another thing, which is the white point here is darker than here. So I have to go and mode adjustment and let's go to levels and I'm going to bring my white point, make it a little bit darker. And my black point is actually a little darker. You can see the blacks here are darker here than they are here. So we're just going to bring that down just a tiny bit. This, this can go very fast. So just do very tiny increments Four for the black, maybe five, and then a little bit more for the whites. See that before, after. I'm really lowering, lowering contrast, making the whites more gray and making the blacks more gray. So before and after, that's pretty good. Okay, so uh, that was the buildings. I still see a little bit of a line here that I'm not happy with. So I'm gonna go in here and, or in this one, hit B for brush, make sure I'm black. And the foreground color, 45, let's do 45, uh, 90, just have a slightly stronger edge. Click right there. And shift click right here and just makes a line right across. Okay, so now we have the building. We have these bricks, these bricks, the buildings. Now we need the water and the sky. So uh, it's always a good idea to name your layers. So we'll call this uh, uh, buildings. Uh, this is the smaller bricks. So smaller bricks. And this is the larger bricks. Larger bricks. Okay, all right. And um, let's take the sky. So go back to the retouched, and I'm going to uh, take the marquee tool, start from the very top left, and I'm going to actually take a little bit of the buildings here and go as close as possible to the, uh, to the post there. And once again, layer new, new layer via copy, okay? So um, I have this layer here, okay, which was up here. 
Uh, I'm going to undo the move and Command T or Control T to transform. And I'm actually going to mirror this. Okay. I just want to just I want to have uh, a mirrored image, something like this. Now we will see that it's mirrored, and you'll see a line and all that. But we'll fix that after. Right now, I just want to get the bulk of this out of the way. And um, I want to add a mask, but this time I want the entire mask to hide. Usually when you create a mask, it's, it's just a mask that doesn't hide anything. But if you hold down the Alt key, it creates a mask that's fully black, which means that it's um, hiding everything. Now, what, th what that means is instead of masking out, I'm actually revealing with the whites directly. All right, so hit B for brush. In this case, I want a very soft brush because it's uh, soft and cloudy and a pretty big brush over here, so something around the 300s. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click right here, like this, okay? So we still see the mirror. We're gonna go ahead and fix that, but for now, I'm really just trying to get behind. So the building, the small buildings here is pretty good. This here, this mirrored, um, let's see that. It's a little, it's going a little too far. So let's make that a little smaller. Let's go 200 here, or even smaller, 150. Uh, I X to um, invert the colors black in the front. I'm just going to hide some of this right here. I just want it, I really just want it uh, behind this building. And then X again, white to reveal. Okay, so I'm really trying to create these, uh, the, the sky up here. Now, um, I'm pretty happy with the sky, but um, it's too mirrored. So I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide this layer in this for now. Create a new layer and go to the stamp tool, the clone stamp tool, which is here. And again, sampling all layers. I want to basically smoothen this out a little bit. Um, and I, in that case, I'm gonna do hardness zero, very large brush, very large brush. Okay, that's a little too big. Uh, three something, still a little too big. 400 is pretty good. Hit return and because it's skies, I feel like I can get away with soft, a softer opacity. I'm going to go with like 60%. All right. And then I'm going to sample, say, from here and bring it here. Something like that. And there you go. I'm trying to break that line. All right. And then here, bring it up here. That's pretty decent. Maybe this, bring it up here. Ooh, that's too much. This. And you kind of just look and see what you got. Something like that. And here, here, I'm just kind of, it's clouds. So I feel like I can get it. I have a little more uh, artistic freedom to uh, get away with uh, whatever I want. All right, so it's kind of blurred out. It's uh, decent. Um, let's see if I take a little piece from here and I bring it out here. Is that going to be too much? It is a little too much, um, so I'm not going to do that. All right, now I can bring my other layers back in. And that cloud, that uh, replacement's actually pretty clean. So now we're left with the water. So uh, the water to start, um, I want a nice clean selection of the water. And the easiest way to do that in this case is uh, hit B for brush, right click, and once again, 4585. I w that's sort of really my go-to when I want a clean selection. And we're gonna go into a quick mask. A quick mask is whatever you uh, brush like this, and you go out of quick mask, it turns that into a selection. Okay, that's the simplicity of that. So we're going to go back into quick mask, zoom in to say two or three hundred percent, and we're just going to select uh, using the brush tool um, the mask. Three hundred is a little too much. Let's do uh, two hundred. All right, so I'm going to click like this, and then shift click everywhere, see I'm making a line, it's connecting those dots, okay? All right, shift clicking and there we go. That's pretty good. And so making a selection means that um, I now basically, whatever manipulations I'm gonna do is only gonna be uh, in that area. And so I don't have to worry about um, you know, changing anything in the bricks or changing anything in the buildings because it's all exclusively in this area. Um, so it's nice. It's it's a sort of a clean way of uh, addressing your 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 different zones or areas of your photo. Um, and it usually doesn't take too long. Sometimes it seems a little meticulous, 
um, but a nice clean uh, a nice clean selection really makes it easier to retouch anything in Photoshop. All right, and um, actually, if you're interested in perfecting your selection skills, I do have a full course that goes over every possible way of doing uh, masking and extraction, which is essentially selections you can find on my website called the Mas uh, Masking and Extraction Masterclass. Uh, it goes into many, many different ways, quick masks and everything else. So anyway, if you're interested in that, you can uh, check it out. All right, so we're coming close to wrapping this selection. And like this. And all right. Like so, okay, and then this part, I'm just going to overlap it and then bring it up. Oh, I thought I was at the edge. I'm not. There we go. That's the edge. And all the way up. Shift click, shift click. All right, so I'm just going to zoom, zoom out, and now I want to fill this area in. So I'm just going to uh, use the magic wand tool and select in here, select, modify, expand. Let's just do 10 or 15 pixels. So it's going to increase that. And then go to the edit, fill, fill with black. And because I'm in a quick mask, that really means it's filling it with the uh, foreground. It's a black selection mode. Come out of quick mask and look at this beautiful selection. OK. Now, um, what I want to do is create a group and turn this selection into a mask on this group. So whatever layers I put in here, so say I'm going to make a new layer that's in this group, it'll only, so I'll show you, uh, hit B, and I'll pick a, pick a color like red here. If I brush in here, it works, and then outside of that area, it just doesn't do it, all right? So it's only going to reveal anything in this area. Obviously, I don't want that line. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is use the clone stamp tool again, so S for uh, that. Uh, clone stamp tool and we're going to start off with 100% and we're just going to get rid of uh, this chunk this uh, post right here uh, uh, first in the sort of most uh, easy clear way so 100% come around here and do this so I'm clone stamping that out all right so I'm going to do that I have to just get the edge because I have a, an angle there so up here do like this and then pick it from down here and go upwards here We'll get into all the little lines and stuff with the detail. I just want to really just get rid of it completely, and then we'll fine tune the uh, all the perspective lines. There's also a boat here that was uh, this is a very long exposure photo, and we can see that it, it moved about around and and then left. So I want to get rid of that sort of ghost that remained. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do is make an even bigger brush. Uh, another way to do the, the brush size is hold on Control and Alt, and up and down changes hardness, and left and right changes size, okay, with your mouse. So that's a kind of a neat way of doing that. So I'm going to make it a little harder and a little bigger, actually softer and bigger, like this. Not too much. And I'm going to go ahead and make it, let's try 100 to see how that works. I'm going to select somewhere around here, I want to see what happens if I fill this in right here. I'm changing, I'm definitely changing the color from that sort of, you know, more magenta. Okay, I can't get further than that because I get that hard line. So what I'm going to do is um, make it a little bit softer, just a little bit softer, and let's try and see what happens if I change the mode to luminosity. I'm just going to change the luminosity and not so much the color. Undo that, it still changed the color. Um, not too bad. It's okay actually. I can I can I can deal with that. Let's do it again. Something like this. Not bad. It's not really what I wanted. We can also try another method, which is the healing brush tool. Let's see how well it does. That's this tool right here, healing brush tool. Uh, not the spot, but the healing brush. And once again, so it takes sampled, and I'm gonna take it from over here. Okay. And I'm going to go over here. Ah, it's current layer. I need to do all layers. So select it from here and go over here and see how that works. 
pretty awful. So undo that. All right, so the stamp tool, we're going to stick with the stamp tool. We're at 100%, and we're going to stick with normal. And since we're doing normal, let's go down to 60-something percent like this. And let's just get rid of him just kind of slowly like that. Okay, I am definitely I definitely have a color change there. Pick again here, kind of go up here. I don't mind getting rid of that top line there. That's bothering me anyway. All right. Uh, one more stroke right here and here. Now remember, I can't go over the buildings because I'm confined into this mask. Okay, let's call this the water group. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take a smaller uh, clone stamp at 100% and get rid of these little spots that I had. They're actually on the sensor. So let's do 150 and 50. Still pretty big. Let's do 80. And we're at 100%. So here, I'm just going to click next to it. Ooh, that's a little too strong. Uh, click here, there. You can use a spot healing brush for that too if you want. Um, all right, I'm going to undo both of those. My, my brush is too hard. I'm going to go down to zero. I want it to really blend. There you go. There you go. Still too strong. There, like that. That's not bad. Like this, like this, like this, and this. This line is all right. It's, well... That's okay. I like it better like that, actually. And this last little speck over here. Okay. And there you go. So we got rid of that post. If you look at the original, I'm going to bring it above everything. Before and after. Got rid of that completely and pretty seamless. All right, guys. I hope you liked this episode. And if you did, please uh, like it. Uh, share it on Facebook or Google Plus or any other social media. Uh, it really helps me out, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about my new course called Photoshop 101. This is the most in-depth course I've ever done on Photoshop, and it takes you from not knowing anything in Photoshop all the way to really learning how to do composites, color adjustments, layers, masks. It's really comprehensive. It's the most detailed course I've ever done in Photoshop. And if you ever wondered what course to start with or what course to do for Photoshop, this is really the one for you. I'm telling you, I've tried many courses. I've studied, I've seen other possible tutorials and so on. This is very comprehensive. If you want to get a discount for this course, use the one that's shown up on your screen right here. And uh, I want to show you, here's a few before and after. So here you see this one. I'm going to show you how to take this photo and transform it to this and how to take these few photos and make a composite like this. Or take simple effects like, I want to change the sky, but it needs to manipulate all the colors everywhere. So I start off with this photo, and I end up with this one. Anyway, these are just a few. Check it out. I'm sure you'll really like it.